Hello, my friends. May God bless you all. And I pray, I ask, I desire, I supplicate, I cry out to God so that His Holy Spirit, the Spirit of life, of eternal life, the Spirit of resurrection, the Spirit of light, may come upon you right now, and especially you who are suffering, you who are groaning, whatever your situation is, you who are suffering right now, in this moment, may the Holy Spirit come upon you. May He come upon you right now. Because we agree, you agree with me and I agree with you. And if two or three people agree on earth, Jesus said, what a wonderful word, isn't it? Jesus is the one who said it. If two or three people agree on earth concerning anything, of course, as long as it's fair and righteous, then it will be agreed in heaven. May the Holy Spirit come upon all, all of you, all those who are connected here with me right now, because I want you to receive life and receive it to the full. See, I was thinking here today concerning the biblical text that speaks of God's choices. <laughs> My apologies, when I laugh like this, please, I'm not laughing at anybody. I'm laughing because I'm happy. I rejoice whenever I read the Bible. So, there are certain passages that bring joy to me, to my soul. They bring so much joy that only laughing to externalize what is inside of me. Anyway, concerning God's choices, the holy text says that He doesn't choose the wise. He doesn't choose many wise because the wise ones, they trust in their wisdom. So God lives this, the wise ones to decide. Not many mighty. He also doesn't call many that were mighty because the mighty have power. They have political power, financial power. They have power to influence. So God doesn't call them either. And then he doesn't call many noble. <laughs> Because the noble ones, they count with their friends, with their vast knowledge and relationships. They count with their pride, their nobility. So God doesn't count many people like this. God chooses. God chooses. Pay attention the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. <laughs> oh, my father. He called me. He chose me. For sure, I was a foolish one. I was, I don't know, despised, rejected. But God called me, chose me. Thank God. Praise be to Him. And that's why we want to pass on to other people the experiences that He has given us. So God calls people who are foolish according to this world. People who are possessed, people who are despised, people whom are despised by others. 
And that's exactly what the Holy Text says. God has chosen the weak things. So those who are weak, are, are you weak? Then God chose you. My dear friend, He chose you. You who are weak, you who have been weak, feeble, God has chosen you. What for? To put to shame the strong and mighty, those who think they are very important. Are you ugly? If you are ugly, if you have, let's say, a strange appearance, then God called you to put to shame those who are beautiful, those who have a good appearance. Do you believe in this? I do. I believe. Because it's what is written here. God has chosen the foolish things of this world, the base things, the things that are despised, the rubbish of the world, and the things which are not to bring to nothing, to eliminate the things that are. And why does God do that? Why does He choose those whose lives are on the inside out to put to shame those who are normal? Let's put it this way. Do you know why? Because God wants to be seen through each and every one of us that are or that have been despised. Because how is God going to be glorified in the life of a person that already has the glory of this world, that already carries the ostentations of this world? Makes no sense, isn't it? So he chooses those who are at the edge of, for example, committing suicide. You want to kill yourself because your life is horrible. So God chose you. God chose you. Of course, though, you have to give ears to him. You have to accept. You have to agree with him, isn't it? You have to say, yes, I accept, Lord. I accept to be chosen. I accept to be one of these people whom you want to use to put to shame those who think they are someone. So, my dear friend, my dear friend, to summarize what the text here is saying is that God chose those who are not good in order to confuse, to put to shame those who supposedly are good. God chose you who are listening to me right now and thinking of ending your life because you have been someone who are extremely depressed, anxious. You can't sleep. You are that person that when the night approaches, I, I, you dread the night time. When evening comes, you already think, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to face another night. And do you know why people are so desperate when they can't sleep? Do you know why? It's because the soul of that person wants to rest. The soul wants peace. And only at night when they sleep that they have peace in their soul. To those who do not believe in God, those who don't care at all about what He says. So God gives to everyone the privilege, good and evil people. He gives them the privilege of spending a night and sleeping and resting, resting their soul, to alleviate their soul. He gives the night for this reason. But when evening comes, the night approaches, many people are worried, and now what's going to happen? I'm going to have to spend one more night awake. 
And if you even envious of those who can sleep, yes or no? I can even imagine. I imagine a person, for example, lying next to someone who is snoring. How envious I feel. I wish I could sleep like that. Very well. God chose you. You who suffer with insomnia, with anxiety, with fear, full of doubts. He chose you who are groaning so that His greatness could be manifested in your life and that everyone could see, can see, look, indeed, this person was rubbish. Look how they are. They are someone honorable, someone who has a family, a person who is well set in life. Look at that. What happened to your life? And then you can say, look, I had an encounter with God. I had an encounter with the Lord Jesus. I received the Holy Spirit. So the person is like, oh, wow, how wonderful. And they will also want to have what you have. So God will be sanctified. He is sanctified in the life of His chosen ones. Because His chosen ones become the image of God in this world. God's image, the fragrance of Christ in this world. God wants to exude His fragrance through you. You who find yourself alone, lonely, abandoned. You placed your heart, your deceitful heart. You placed your heart on someone. You gave your heart to somebody. But that person deceived you. That person deceived you. That person, you. That person took advantage of you. And many have been those, and by the way, just here between us, people who are very intelligent, people who are highly educated with a degree, a high level of education, people who have financial conditions, but they have been victims of the internet scams victims of the offers that are being made online. So I was talking to someone who told me, Bishop, there are many women who are falling into the smooth talk of a man who uses the internet a website to attract women who have money. And these women who are so lonely, unloved, empty, who have problems with insomnia, who have problems in their love life, who love someone but are not being reciprocated, and these women fall into the lies of these criminals of these people who have bad intentions and they end up losing a whole lot of money because they believe in the fantasies that these elements and so many others are there lying about on the internet. But why do they get deceived? Because they are looking for someone who will understand them. That's the reality. God, through the Holy Spirit, comprehends you. You, my dear friend, you don't need anything. You don't need people or things. You don't need to be depending on anything in this world. God wants to make His dwelling place inside of you. And you who are suffering in a lot of pain, for sure, He chose you. Why do you think that right now you are connected here in this broadcast? Why do you think? Do you think it's in vain? Was by chance? No, God, through the Holy Spirit, guided you here to participate of this broadcast, to hear these words. His words, these are not my words. It's His intelligence, it's His wisdom, His knowledge. So He 
knows your situation. He knows your pain. He knows what it is to suffer because God suffers. God suffers and He suffers a whole lot. He suffers for all humanity, but He cannot do anything as long as the person who is suffering as well doesn't place their life in His hands, does not surrender their heart to Him. God suffers. Did you know that? And do you know why He suffers? Because He loves. And whoever loves suffers, isn't it? Isn't it? Whoever loves suffers. Whoever doesn't love doesn't suffer. But those who love suffer. And how they suffer. Those who are mothers and father, you, you know what I'm talking about. You have a son, a daughter, who is lost in addiction, in drugs, into the world, and you want to help, but you speak, but they don't give you ears. What, what can you do, isn't it? You say, what, what can I do? I can't do anything. I have the conditions, I have money, I have inf influence, but I cannot do anything for my son or my daughter. Why? Because they do not want my help. They say no to me. They run away from me. They prefer to live on the streets in Crackland, dirty and abandoned out there, than to enjoy the comfort that I can give them. So you cannot do anything for them. And so is God. God suffers when people who suffer turn their back on Him, the only way who can actually help them. Jesus is the same. He said, come to me. That's why he said that. He said, come to me and I will give you rest. I'm with you. But if you are not with me, then what can I do for you? Is it possible for two people who don't agree between themselves have communion? No, it's not possible. I agree. I want to help you, but you don't want to agree with me. So what can I do for you? Therefore, my friend, in the name of Jesus, by the love of God, understand this. Understand that God stretches out His hands to you right now. Just as He stretched out His hands to me, He does it to you as well. You've seen there in our posts testimonies of people who had a horrible life, perhaps even worse than yours. And God saved them. And today, they are people who have a life. They have a story of life to tell us. So, just listen the voice of God. He chose you. He has been choosing you. But He will only change your life. He will only interfere in your life when you surrender yourself to Him. Because if you don't give yourself to Him, so how can He give you a new life? How? How? Isn't it what we want? Isn't it what every human being wants? To establish a family, to find a partner, to be a couple, to have children, a house, to have a home, to have peace and, and, and calm. And to be, you know, living, enjoying what God created, which is life and life to the full. This is what the father or the parents want to their children. But in order for this to happen, you have to agree. You have to get married to him. You have to say, yes, Lord, I want, I accept you. If you accept him now, right now, in this moment, then God accepts you. He starts to change your life. By the way, He changes your life. He doesn't change the exterior overnight. No, that's not what it is. But your interior, your inner being, He changes straight away, right now. If you, if you accept, if you believe, you, you accept this invitation that God accepted you, but you have to come to Him, 
then we are the ones who need him. He doesn't need us. If you say, yes, Lord, have mercy on me. He is my life. He is my life. You are going to see that the Holy Spirit will visit you will change your mind. First, he changes your mind, your thoughts. He changes it. And once he changes here, your mind, then he changes your exterior as well. When he delivers you, he sets your soul and heart free because you are the owner of your heart and only you can give it, surrender it to him or not. If you want, then he does it right now. Right now, this very moment. Do you want it? And I'm speaking here with people who are considering themselves rubbish right now. You are being considered rubbish by society, by family, your loved ones, by people that you thought could help you. And you don't need to count on anybody right now anymore. You can count on the one who said, come to me and I will give you rest. Do you want it? So, if you want it right now, in this moment, I will unite my faith with yours and we are going to pray. And in Jesus' name, it will happen that the Holy Spirit will meet you to change the situation. All right? Let's talk to God. Yes? Let me just drink some water, please. Excuse me. So, do that. Have your phone in hands. Place, place it over your forehead and close your eyes. Just listen to my prayer and receive what God promises. He said, come to me, all those who are weary, heavy laden, those who are foolish, those who are weak, those who are despised, like the rubbish of this world, despised by everything and everyone, unloved, unloved. So, do that right now. Place your mobile phone and put it over your head and let us talk to God. I will talk to God. I will speak to my Father on your behalf. Right now, in the name of Jesus, let's pray. My Father, I praise and thank you because in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are able to enter your presence any time of the day or night, in the middle of the night, in any circumstances. The problem is that only come to you when we have a problem. That's the reality. We only go to the dentist when we have a toothache. So, in this moment, we come to you because these people who are suffering and listening to us now, they are feeling exactly that, like garbage, despised, weak. This person is ill, is sick whether in the soul or in the body, whatever is the situation that they find themselves in, my Father, we unite our faith now before you. We unite our faith in your word. I'm not feeling anything. I don't feel your presence. I don't feel, I don't see you. 
I cannot touch you, which means that our faith is not based on feelings from the heart, what I feel or what I don't feel. Our faith is focused on what you said, and what you said, we pay attention to it and we accept it, it's your word. You said, come to me. So, this come to me, this invitation is for everyone who is suffering, whether Catholics, Spiritists, Evangelicals, Muslims, Jews, regardless of the religion, or even a person who doesn't have a religion, the person who is suffering right now, then you are inviting them. So, this person who is participating in this prayer right now, let them be free now. Let them literally receive the most important that they need right now, which is peace. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the spirit of peace comes and penetrates inside of this heart and remove the doubts, the fears, anxieties, preoccupations. Let this heart receive peace, my Father, peace. That the peace you've given me will come upon this person right now. And that the joy that you've given me will also come with this peace. I ask you, Holy Spirit, that just as you came upon my life and the life of so many millions of people who have come to the Universal Church, let it come upon this person now so that it will be made clear, evident, that it will be registered that what we've read here, that you chose the foolish things to put to shame the wise, you chose the base and despised things and those that are not to put to shame those that are. O oh, Almighty God of Israel, let it happen right now, right now, let there be a transformation in this person that watches us, that participates in this prayer, in the name and by the merits of the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask you and we thank you. Amen. And thank God. Amen. My dear friend, I believe. Do you believe with me? Then we agree with this and this happens right now. And pay attention, please. Let me come close to you. Pay close attention. When we receive peace, do you know what happens? Right after comes the joy. The joy that the peace brings. Rejoice. I know that the problems are on the outside. Your problems continue there. But the most important, your interior receives peace so that you can face these problems and overcome them every day. And the Holy Spirit will give you wisdom for that. Okay? May God bless you all. And don't forget, today, Thursday, later on at 8 p.m. here in the Temple of Solomon or at any universal church of the Kingdom of God, you have the opportunity to participate of the love therapy to resolve your problem in, in your love life. Come to learn how to love. Come to learn how to love so that you can learn as well how to be loved. To be loved. The Love Therapy at 8 p.m. tonight. God bless you all. And until then, in the name of Jesus. Amen.